Now starting with the game mechanic, it will work in the following way. Our right and left controllers will be able to grab on to one of these grips on the climbing wall. And we do that by finding an overlap. When the controller is overlapping the grips on the wall, then we want to be able to hold the Oculus Quest controller trigger and be able to pull the player upwards when the player pulls the grip down. To do that, we will add collision shapes to every single one of these grips. Wonderline Engine allows you to do that fairly efficiently, so don't fret. This is gonna be easy sailing. We go ahead and find this object in the hierarchy. And we do that by finding the root node, which again has a root node parented to it, and a very weirdly called other root node. And we basically can continue until we find the actual root. I'm going to add a new object on the shard too. And this is a collision object. That means it already has a collision to it. But now we can independently move this uh, collider to the right place. So for, th for this shard, first of all, we will want to uh, go ahead and hit G, move it upwards, and then move it to the left until it roughly has the right position. And we can move around it a bit to ensure it actually does have the right position. We see, for example, here it needs to stick out of the wall a little bit more. Now making sure the collision is selected, we go to the collisions component and we just reduce the radius of this grip to make sure that it fits the actual grip mesh a little nicer can go ahead and just experiment here and use, for example, dot two five, which then means that we have to adjust the position of the script just a little bit more. And then we have our first script. To make it a little easier to work with, we're gonna move this collision to our root node instead, which means that we can go ahead and duplicate this object, including its entire components by hitting control D. And then we can just position this to a different location, for example, this script. We will repeat this over and over again until we have every one of these grips dealt with. And we can use this little square icon at the top of the gizmo to only translate on the Y and X axes. And you'll notice that the sphere doesn't fit every one of these grips specifically. And for this case, for example, we're going to go ahead and switch the sphere to an axis aligned bounding box. And that will give us a box that we cannot rotate because it's axis aligned, but it's a little faster than using a box that rotates faster, meaning it costs less performance to calculate intersections with. And then we can select the extents to something more useful. For example, 0.4 for the width, 0.25 for the height, and 0.25 for the depth. We see it already matches quite well. The height might be a little excessive, so we're going to use 0.15 uh, instead. This is a great collider also for a few other grips here. So we're going to go ahead, duplicate this, and move it to the ones that it matches well. And then just go ahead, select one of the collisions here, duplicate them. Until we finally have every one of these covered by a collision. We will notice though, and I just use the scroll wheel to speed up the view, speed, uh, view a little bit here. We notice that some of these collisions actually are not placed very nicely. So we're going to go to a position where we can see better what's going on and make sure that these align not only from the perspective that we duplicated them, duplicated them in, but instead any other perspective as well.
Now finally, after placing all of those, uh, we can go ahead and place two final ones, one for the left controller and one for the right controller, to then later check the spheres of the controllers to overlap with the spheres of uh, our grips here. So we're gonna go ahead and find the left, find the left quest controller under the player hierarchy. We're gonna go ahead and add a component collision again. And we'll notice uh, if we move out a bit that the sphere here is huge again. We just use around 10 or 15 centimeters of radius. And do the same thing also for the right controller. With that, we have everything we need to start writing a script which will handle the button input and move the player upwards when grabbing and letting go.